Hello, and welcome to another video of Methuklasan. In this video, I will demonstrate how to run repeated measures ANOVA in Jamovi. The repeated measures ANOVA compares means across one or more variables based on repeated observations. A repeated measures ANOVA model can also include zero or more independent variables. Again, a repeated measures ANOVA has at least one dependent variable with more than one observation. This is like the extension of paired samples t-test or dependent t-test. Here are the assumptions that we need to check before performing the test. First, your dependent variable should be measured at the interval or ratio level, i.e., continuous. Second, the independent variable should consist of at least two categorical, related groups, or matched pairs. Third, there should be no significant outliers. Fourth, the distribution of the dependent variable in the two or more related groups should be approximately normally distributed. Lastly, the variances of the differences between all combinations of related groups must be equal. We can perform Mochley's test of sphericity to test if this assumption is met. Let's take a look at this example. Mr. Torres, a math teacher, developed a game to improve students' operational skills on integers. He named the game Integer Boggler and gave the respondents a 50-item pretest. After letting the students play the game for two weeks, a mid-test was given. In the fourth week, the post-test was administered, and scores were consolidated. The independent variable is the type of test, pre, mid, post. The dependent variable is the test score. The null hypothesis states that the mean scores of the students for the three tests are not statistically significantly different. Based on the three observations, I had set up three columns in Jamovi. The first respondent was 6 in the pretest, 8 in the midtest, and 27 in the post-test. To test the normality and check for outliers, go to Analyses, Exploration, and Descriptives. Drag the three types of test in the Variables box. To check the normality of each group of observations, go to the Statistics drop-down panel and select Shapiro-Wilk under the Normality option. Note that the p-value for the Shapiro-Wilk values should be greater than 5% or 0.05 so that we can say that the distributions are normal. In this case, the three p-values are greater significant than 0.05, passing the normality assumption. Note that the Friedman test can be used in case the normality assumption was not met. To check for outliers, select box plot in the plots drop-down panel. In the results view, the pretest scores don't contain outliers. However, rows 24 and 25 in the midtest column contain outliers. Similar to the pretest, the posttest scores don't contain outliers. Since there are two identified outliers in the plots for the midtest, we will remove these rows in the data view. The test of sphericity can be included while running the repeated measure test. Go to Analyses, ANOVA, and Repeated Measures ANOVA option. Identify each level of observations or factors in the Repeated Measures Factors box. Rename the title and each level for easy interpretation of results. Next is to drag each variable in the appropriate repeated measure cells.
Before interpreting the results on the right, check the sphericity first. Go to the Assumption Checks drop-down panel and select Sphericity Tests. Note that if the p-value of the Mochley statistic is less than the significance level, usually 0 0.05, the assumption of sphericity has been violated. But, if the p-value is greater than or equal to the significance level, the assumption of sphericity has not been violated. Since the p-value in the sphericity table is 0 0.023, less than 0 0.05, the sphericity has been violated. So, we will use the greenhouse geyser as an alternative. To interpret the results, look at the p-value column in the ANOVA table. Since the p-value is less than 0.05, we will reject the null hypothesis, which means that the mean scores of the students for the three tests are statistically significantly different. Please remember that if the null hypothesis is rejected in the repeated measures ANOVA test, post hoc analysis should be done. To do this, go to the post hoc tests drop down panel and select Tuki, this is the typical method for repeated measures ANOVA. In the post hoc table, we can see the different comparisons of test scores. If the mean difference is negative, the latter group has a higher mean, the same can be said if the t-statistic value is negative. The p-value column indicates the significance of each mean difference between groups. The difference is statistically significant if the p-value is less than the significance level, usually 0.05. In our example, the three comparisons showed significance. For instance, the respondent's mean score in the mid-test is statistically higher than their pre-test scores. You can confirm this by showing the descriptives table for the data set. Here's a typical APA format for interpreting the results in your paper. That's all for this video. If you want more lessons in statistics and other math content, you can check out the description below. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next video.